Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we are here at the Zurich office of a VC called Creator, and I'm very excited to introduce you to Alex, who is the investment manager here. Welcome to The Startup Show. Thank you so much, Cedric. Good to be here. Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today, again, we have an investor here on the show. It's really exciting. And Alex, as usual on The Startup Show, for everybody who does not know you yet, now is your time to introduce yourself. Perfect. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show, Cedric. Great show and a really good addition to the Swiss startup scene. Thank you. I think uh, I we need it. initiatives like this that um, bottom up drive uh, founders, entrepreneurs, investors to talk more to each other and to know about each other. So super happy to be here. Um, like Cedric said, um, uh, my name is Alex Stöckel. I work with Creator Venture. Um, starting off from the beginning, I'm originally from Luxembourg. I grew up in Germany, studied business, so pure business background. I've lived in Spain for a while, in France, in Stockholm. And now since uh, six and a half years, I'm in Zurich. As often after business school, I first worked in strategy consulting for a German company called Rodan Burger. Uh, did their very tough cost-cutting process optimization things in industry environments, the corporate world. And I, after a few years, decided I want to get out of that. And by a funny coincidence, I ended up in gastronomy. <laughs> um, so I was actually interviewing for a position at Money Park, a quite uh, now famous fintech from Zurich that was recently acquired by Helvetia. So I did miss out on an exit there. <laughs> it would have been my first exit. But uh, in the final interview with one of the co-founders, um, we drifted off in gastronomy speak, chatting about the Zurich scene. And he told me, well, actually, um, just a few weeks ago, he acquired a majority share in a, in a successful salad bar. And he's looking for someone that uh, works with him in making that into a chain. And he said, if, if you want to, then instead of uh, joining Money Park, uh, you, can, you can join us there. And that sounded like such an adventure to me, especially <laughs> with this contrast of coming from, from the corporate environment. Yeah. So I said yes after one weekend of thinking about it. And at the time, it felt like a really risky move because you come from that very classical career path and you suddenly you stand in a restaurant. We didn't have an office in the beginning and we had one single restaurant. And right. if that would have failed, it would have been a really bad story. <laughs> right? um, but fortunately, it went well. We quickly opened four new restaurants. Um, we became the leading health fast food chain in, in Switzerland at the time, uh, recruited 60, 70 employees and quickly built up operations both on headquarter level as well as uh, in, in the stores. I was there responsible for, for processes, for uh, setting up the organization and got a taste of, of startup life and right. uh, something that I hadn't before that even really known existed, I must admit. It was a, was a far away world for me. And then um, I got in touch with Creator Venture. Again, it was by coincidence at the time, Cedric Köhler, one of our managing partners, and together with me here, the team in, in Zurich on the Swiss ground, was searching for someone to um, help build up our operations, our presence right. in Switzerland, find more investments here, but also just be more active in the startup scene. Mm -hmm. And that sounded so intriguing to me, combining this uh, consultant approach, uh, kind of working on a, on a high-level perspective with startups, but at the same time, working with startups and right. working in super dynamic environments. And yeah, since two and a half years, that's what I'm doing. So you're here in Zurich. So I'm here in Zurich. I'm based in Zurich. We, we sit here in Seefeld, close to the opera, and we, we try to uh, do what we can to right. add to the Swiss startup scene. Just so, the last so, sentence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, besides that, I, I, I do a few other things. I um, am a global shaper with the World Economic Forum, which is an organization bringing together young, uh, high potential uh, entrepreneurs and uh, future leaders on working on projects to create a positive impact on society, on our uh, community. I run a little, together with my wife, I run a little... Uh, a little, a, a little, big one. A little, it's, a, it's a big Instagram um, account. A little Instagram <laughs> account with, with restaurants and travel recommendations, right. something that grew out of pure hobby into, into sure. a passionate side project. Yeah, so that's so, myself. So thank you very much, it's great. Sorry so, for talking. That's for perfect. So let, let's try to understand where their passion come from. You gave us a little bit of a background. You see a lot of startups, a lot of deal flow. Tell me what excites you so much to be like exposed to all of these startups and work together with entrepreneurs? I mean, it's uh, quite a privileged job, I'd say. You get the opportunity on a daily basis to work with very ambitious people, people that within their field are usually best in class, mm -hmm. um, that work on things that 
to most of the world aren't familiar yet, future technologies that have the potential to drastically change things within their field. And you get to work with them, um, you get to interact with them, and you get to learn. You get to learn every day. So um, I think it's quite rare um, to have a profession where one of your key responsibilities is to always learn and further develop yourself. And mm -hmm. so if that's something that you like, if, that's, um, if that idea you know, triggers your enthusiasm, then that's an amazing job. Obviously, it's uh, just like any job, it has its downsides as well, mm -hmm. right? Most of the time, you're rather on the sidelines. You sometimes get the itch to, you know, put up the sleeves and, and get to work. <laughs> and get to work. But you're rather in an advisory position with sparing partner to the founders that we work with. But then again, we get the opportunity to work with a lot of different topics, a lot of different people. And, uh, right. So, so, so let's talk about Creator because we haven't really introduced Creator so like clearly to my audience yet. So maybe explain in a nutshell like what exactly makes Creator Venture so unique. Creator Venture uh, is unique in, in quite a few ways. For once, we're an international VC. We invest across Europe. Um, we have uh, our headquarter close to Frankfurt in Germany. We have an office in Stockholm with two people, with three people here in Zurich. And so we're one of the few, if not maybe the only VC in Switzerland that is an, uh, a European venture fund that has um, satellite operations in Switzerland. Then again, we're quite Swiss in a sense. We've been here for more than 10 years. We've done some of the more notable investments in Switzerland, some that worked really well, like Doodle, some that haven't worked so well, like Joyce. Um, but we've been involved in quite some milestone startups within the Swiss landscape. And so we're super happy to be here. We're, we're super happy to contribute to, right. um, to the Swiss ecosystem. In, in our setup, we're a classical venture fund. Um, we exist since 2003. Um, we invest from our fourth fund generation. So there's quite a track record. And interestingly enough, the track record goes far beyond that. So since the 1980s, Two of our three managing partners have been investing in venture. Um, we've done, in, if you look at our partnership, more than 200 investments. Mm -hmm. We've been lead investor in more than 20 IPOs and we've had plenty of trade sales. And so we have a track record that's quite unique in European venture. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, one of the things that is uh, super important to point out for founders is that the largest investor in our assets under management is our partnership itself, with around one third of the 220 million Swiss francs that we have under management coming from our own management. Yeah. We have quite a significant stake in the investments that we do. Mm -hmm. And that really does change our perspective. So we don't follow that very traditional venture rule of thumb of uh, focus on the good ones, drop the bad, aim for the unicorns and mm -hmm. whatever doesn't fly, doesn't fly. Um, that's very different in our case. And um, so we really work with all companies to bring them to a success. And if that sometimes takes a bit of a longer breath, if that takes us to, to pivot in strategy, then that's things that we, that we work on because we're on the same side of the table as the founders that we work mm -hmm. with. You get a lot of startups that want to pitch to you, that pitch to you, that you see. And every VC has like a little bit of their own criteria, even though some of them are, might be very similar. Maybe you can point out like what is like, let's say, the best type of startup to, to come to you. What are, this, let's say, the categories, the industries, the check sizes that are like relevant to your VC? Absolutely. We're quite uniquely set up in the sense that from the same fund, we invest in life science and ICT companies, which has been super interesting in the past uh, three to four years as the overlap between those two worlds is increasing with digital health, health tech, um, anything around DNA sequencing, where suddenly the ICT part becomes very connected with life science. But uh, going into how we select startups, we see around 2,500 companies per year from various sources. Uh, some uh, apply to us passively just through our website. Um, but the majority of good deals we get through our network, uh, through founders in our portfolio, previous founders and co-investors. And since we have such a ton of companies that we look at. We have to very quickly filter out the ones that we, we don't consider relevant. And um, for that, we mainly look at um, timing and technology. So we try to understand if the technological innovation that the, the founders are working with at the current point in time is relevant to us. And so an example of where that's not relevant is if someone approaches us today um, with an e-commerce platform um, and then we, we just 
uh, have to realize that it's too late for venture e-commerce investments. The peak of that has happened. Exit multiples are not significantly attractive right. anymore. Yeah. And once we have done that, um, it very much comes down to the team. Um, if we feel that it's the right technology at the right time in a market that is uh, large enough to be able to build up a company that will generate significant revenue, we look at the founders. Um, what is their background? How do they fit together? Is it complementary in skill sets or is it too monotone? Um, and we, we try to pin it down to that. But lastly, one of the things that is mentioned far too little is that the, the personal fit mm -hmm. between our company and the startup and between our investment team and the founders has to be good. Mm -hmm. um, because when we invest, since we invest early stage, and you mentioned ticket sizes, we usually go in as a seed or Series A investor. As we go in so early, the time span that we work together with founders is quite long. Yeah. So we have to expect that we are five to seven years, sometimes longer, working together. And if then, right from the start, you have the feeling that this doesn't work well, we always say internally that after, you know, after constructive discussion that maybe also gets a bit more intense with the founder, if then afterwards you feel like you cannot go and have a beer together, you know, yeah. and um, just, you know, smoothly get over that. Um, then that uh, is a clear sign that that's maybe not a good fit yeah. for an investment. Mm -hmm. So you have a high deal flow. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the trends that you see like now coming to you. You, you just mentioned about e-commerce, the peak is over. Where are we now pre-peak? <laughs> Where are we pre-peak? It's current times, quite difficult to say actually, because we see a, a huge hype across entire e economy around topics of digitization. Yeah. On one side, because of the interest rate environment, lots of money being put in startups and in, in, in digital business models. And on the other side, we have corporates that feel sometimes quite, quite desperate to very quickly um, get into the space. So it's a bit difficult to sort out between the noise. And that's one of our tasks is to understand where is there just buzz and hype and um, where is actual substance. For example, one of the words that we currently find in all of our um, pitches that we AI. receive is <laughs> artificial intelligence, of course. So what we do internally is we, I mean, even though we're a generalist fund, obviously we're not flying blindly and uh, yeah. hop on whatever comes across. But internally we, we discuss what are the topics and how do we make sure that we understand which ones have substance and which ones don't. Mm -hmm. And so in, in the context of AI, for example, we decided that we have to drill deeper. We have to understand which artificial intelligence technologies are out there and um, how are they used and in which context do they really create value. Yeah, what are trends that we see? We see a lot of artificial intelligence. We see a lot of machine learning algorithms being applied to different topics. There's a lot of talk of proprietary data and um, we have to just verify quickly um, for ourselves if we believe that in that case it is really proprietary, if there is really um, a great use case mm -hmm. for those technologies or if it's just a mere buzzword, right. um, which is fair enough. I understand that founders hop on that train too. Sure, to use sure. That. To wrap up the show, what I like to do is I have a lot of students that watch that. So maybe you can give one tip. Someone wants to sit in that chair being the next investor. What is your tip to, to the students? Oh, um, it's a right, rather small industry. Um, so there's not very frequently openings. And um, what I would recommend to do is to just, you know, get into the startup world in one way or the other. Um, see at your universities if there's events around the topic, maybe uh, intern at a startup to get a feeling if that's actually something that you really like or if it's just the hyped, the hyped, <laughs> the hyped view from the outside that makes it sound so good. Or just like yourself, you know, uh, get out there, speak to people, get a feeling for, for what's happening. If then you you feel like this is really what you want to do, be persistent, yeah? don't sure. don't give up. So networking, I think that's that's probably the key message and yes. understand and speak to people. So Alex, thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much everybody who tuned in today who stay till the end. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you soon with a new episode of the Startup Show. Have a great day.